they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm poking them down. We turn the smiles into frowns. Gang hop out, then we clear them. Hey everyone, my name is Enrique, and you're tuned into Talk of the Town. Today with us we have Jamie Dolan. Yeah, the man, the myth, the legend. Man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, to start off, I just wanted to do this little icebreaker thing we do called the rapid fire questions. Okay. So I'll just rapidly fire out these questions and give me a rapid fire answer. Oh man! All right, <laughs> let's do it. I'm ready. All, All right. right. So uh, three things you'll take with you on an island. Oh man, three things I'll take with me on an island. Uh, fuck. <laughs> That's tough. Damn. Do you want me to come back to it? Yeah, let's come back okay. to that. Let's come back to that. All right. What is uh what is your biggest pet peeve? Biggest pet peeve, uh damn, I'm the worst when it comes to rapid fire. Biggest pet peeve fucking annoying people. Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, listen, no, annoying people are annoying, yeah, so it's exactly. it's not stupid. a bad one. <laughs> it's stupid. Not like educational stupid, like just like fucking stupidity. Yeah, just like just lack of common sense yeah, type shit. Yeah, okay. exactly. I got you. Um, what is one artist that you want to work with that you haven't already? Lil Baby. Lil for Baby? Sure, 100%. Okay. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite thing to do in New York City? Favorite thing to do in New York City? Honestly, is just fucking like be in a position where I could just walk anywhere I want to. Like I just love to explore and yeah. like hit stores and different shit. Yeah, I just love the ability to be able to hit different restaurants, just like go from A to Z in a matter of two seconds. That's okay. definitely what I love about New York for sure. Yeah, it's uh it feels like the cultural hub of the universe almost. It is. No, hundred so percent is. hundred percent is. All right. What is uh Oh, I'll ask you this again. What's the last movie you saw? <laughs> <laughs> or if you All want, right. last TV show. All right. Uh, last TV show I watched was that uh, the new show with uh, Kelly Cuoco. What the hell is it called? Uh, and Chris Messina. Oh, you was it that show that? Uh, on Peacock? Yeah, on Peacock. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I know what it is. I have no clue what it's called. Yeah, I forget what it's called. It's a serial killer show, but I watched that last. Oh. Yeah. It's like, it, the, the title's a question, right? Oh, yes. It's called... Fuck. Uh, oh, uh, isn't it like, how did we get here? Some shit like that? It's something It's something like in your face. It's like, yeah, I fucking yeah. That, <laughs> That's that, how much of a price. <laughs> it was an entertaining show, but it was very much like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a very in your face fucking title. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, what's it called? So you want to go back to the, uh, the island question? Okay, island question. What would we, I mean, obviously, like, it'd be nice to have the phone. Uh, my partner okay and probably my dad because he could fucking figure out just about anything no matter where you are and i need somebody that's very resourceful so okay. you know i yeah. think that'd be helpful it definitely helps to have a handyman on, exactly uh, yeah just and, you, and he is you're an yeah. island yeah no. he's a, a do-it-all plumber so what is uh what's your favorite food see when it comes i don't believe in favorites i'm very much i'm so picky so i have okay. like stuff i love but I don't necessarily have a favorite, but like top three off the top that I could think of, you know, probably Italian, Japanese, and uh, I'll leave it at Italian, Japanese, actually. Okay. Like those are, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah those are pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I can't have a lot of seafood. I'm allergic. Okay. But Italian food? Amazing. It's chef's kiss. Exactly. Absolutely. I'm Italian, so it's got to be grouped in there <laughs> some way, you know? Yeah, you'd be like, you'd be remiss if you didn't say exactly. Italian. Exactly. <laughs> For sure. And it's like, you, yeah, just about anything you could make Italian, too. And you can make it good. So, <laughs> you can work with that. Um, okay. What is, uh, what's your favorite, like, production experience or, like, your favorite on set moment? Favorite on set or moment. memorable on set moment, since you don't like favorites too much, you know? Yeah, I don't. That's why I'm going to be the worst of these. Uh, I mean, I feel like my favorite experience, not even on set, mm -hmm. would probably be uh, the podcast I created just because of like the impact it had amongst uh, the youth. Yeah. So that's definitely my most like memorable experience of actually making huge impact. Uh, yeah. Okay. And last one, New York or LA? Come on. <laughs> fucking not even a fucking question you already know the fucking answer new york yeah fuck? now new i have york. love for la but like not for me i lived there for many years but new york all the way for sure okay all right cool thank you that was rapid yeah. fire questions um for a lot of people who don't know you are a multidisciplinary creator 
you have hands in practically like every form of production when it comes to like media. Uh, what what got you into that exactly? What was the, the moment for young Jamie that was like, oh, this is like this is it. This is what I want to do. Yeah, I. It's funny because I always try to like trace back like what brought me in this industry, mm -hmm. and I don't necessarily know if I have the exact answer to that, but like I. I, I trace it back to like, so from a young age, I feel like my escape, because I didn't grow up in a very, like I grew up in Far Rockaway, uh, and now it's very art forward, but when I grew up, it was not. So, and for like, I was always a movie head, so I watched a lot of Scorsese growing up, and I felt like movies were my escape. Mm -hmm. uh, so before I actually was educated on what meant what, like director, producer, blah, 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 I was like, I want to be on screen. I want to be involved in this. Uh, and I feel like that idea is really what like set me forward. I was like, oh, I want to be on screen. I want to be in the movies. Uh, and then from there, you know, rest is history. But like, that's really like the initial point where I was like, I want to be in entertainment and started pursuing it. Cause I was like, I need to be in movies and I love movies and they were my escape. Okay. Yeah. So at one point along that journey, uh, did you realize that like you not necessarily like had the, or like were better at being behind the screen, but like that was like a really fulfilling and gratifying part of it. For sure. That's an easy answer. So between the ages of 16 and 18, mm -hmm. I made my first feature film. I wrote, produced, and starred in it. And it was really like me doing that as a vehicle to get my name out there as an actor. Cause I was just like, I didn't like the idea of having no power waiting around. Like, you know, I don't come from money or any sort of nepotism in which like, you know, I'd have opportunities handed to me. I knew, knew not a soul in the industry. So I was like, I need to create my own work to get seen and get known. So I worked on this film to be my like vehicle as an actor. Yeah. And then, you know, I did everything for it. I cast it. I put the whole project together for virtually no money. And post that project, I was like, I loved producing. because so I'm like, I'm so good at creatively executing and making shit happen no matter what it is. Uh, and I just had like a great eye for talent behind the camera and all of that. And like, that was the moment that I realized I'm like, I'm a producer. Like I make shit happen. Like I, yeah. I love, I love being in a position to like support and champion the people that I believe in, you know? <clears throat> uh, and now like I never look back from that moment. Wow. Yeah. And I mean like you, you've done so much too as a result of that. So that's gotta be a crazy journey from going to far rock away, not knowing anybody to now, Shit, it's like you know almost yeah, everybody. Yeah, know. That's the funny thing. That's why people look at pe half the time. People think I'm like a fucking nepo baby. I'm like I'm the <laughs> come. I'm the poster child of that. You know the flip side of that. I'm yeah. like so far from it. No, it's just fucking busting my ass for some. I'm still busting my ass. I'm not, I don't think anything is like you know easy and sweet. Like you know it's still always a hustle. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just like honestly just hustling every medium too and not being closed off to just like, oh, I'm like a movie guy. Mm -hmm. like, you know, I capitalize on any sort of medium where it made sense to. Like I always love exploring different formats. Yeah. So do you have a preference like for medium or is it just like wherever there's a camera and like something that needs to be done, you'll like you'll take care of it? Yeah. I mean... Like, I'm a movie buff. Like, I love movies, but more and more as time has gone on, I've mm -hmm. realized how much passion I have for short form just okay. because, like, short form tackles so many... Like, I mean, short form, consi you know, like, consists of music videos to, like, just, like, social media to this, to that. So I just love the short form space, and okay. I feel like it's a lot more rewarding in the immediate and I have more freedom in that space, but I definitely love movies more than anything. Uh, but I like being in the short form space and being able to make the movies like, you know, focus on the movies I want to make versus like when I was younger, just like only wanting to pursue movies. Mm -hmm. Now, like my brain has opened up so much more to just like short form media in general, cause it's so powerful. Okay. So, okay. Let's stay on the topic of short form media. You, uh, recently, actually were in charge of executing all eight visuals for uh, Fabio Foran's recent mm -hmm. tape, uh, Without Warning, right? Mm -hmm. And one of those included Kanye West, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask like a twofold question. One, uh, the first being, what was it like uh, having all of that, like, well, rather being in charge of all of that and having to get it all done? And then I guess the second part would be, what was it like? <laughs> like, did you, did you get to work with Kanye? Or? Uh, not directly, no. Okay. Not on that directly, <laughs> but I mean... Shout out to Prophet and shout out to Jay for the, uh, those whole visuals. But it was a wild, ex it was like, 
it was definitely a different experience because usually like when working on any sort of creative project, especially with like a big artist, mm -hmm. there's a lot of creative input and a lot of opinions. But for this specifically, it was very much like Fabio was doing this on his own time. He oh, wow. wanted to put this out himself. Like okay. he didn't deal with the label or anything. And his manager, Jerry, had come to me and was just like, you know, we have all these songs. We don't have any specific direction. Like you guys do your thing. So we had creative freedom, which was fucking beautiful because that's rare. But we also had like under two weeks to do all of that. Okay. It was like if you know the animation space at all and 3D specifically, like one visual should take a week plus to do. So yeah. it was very much like, and we had lyrics incorporated with that. So like, you know, Profit is amazing at what he does in the 3D space and Jay did all of the, you know, lyrics for it. Um, but it was very difficult, but it was rewarding in the sense that we had creative freedom to like explore what we wanted to explore. Mm -hmm. You know, we just battled time, which was very difficult. Yeah, wow. I could imagine because like, yeah, just putting together animation in general takes so long, especially if it's just like a small team of people. Mm -hmm. So to have to do eight. Exactly. And then like. For sure, yeah, when budget is tight and time is tight, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, you're like, you don't have any sports. So it's like one person is creating everything and the other is doing everything else and I'm just overseeing it entirely. Yeah. That makes it very difficult. Yeah, if you have two weeks to do eight visuals and you have 30 people working for you, obviously, yeah, a lot more feasible. Yeah. Uh, but that was definitely a challenge. And we achieved it and yeah, it was, it was fun. Wow. So like in that process, what was your hand exactly? Like how, uh, how in, what was like the moment by moment process that you were in charge of when it came to doing all of that? So I was like, so I was like the liaison. So basically like profit 3d animator okay. I manage, um, and him and I would go back and forth on ideas mm -hmm. per song and try to like coordinate a creative. And then I would let him do his thing creatively. And then I would oversee it and make sure it met like, you know, the threshold that like we wanted to achieve and that we were happy with. And also that, you know, I knew that they would like the artist side would be happy with. So it was like, I was very hands on in terms of like the creative and making sure everything went smoothly. Uh, everything met the standards that I have, mm -hmm. that he has, that the artist has, um, and just like keeping things on time, like which was difficult. Uh, so it was very much just like trying to <laughs> trying to maneuver things as smoothly as possible, but keeping the creative integrity we all have, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. Cool. Yeah, because I mean, like I've seen some other interviews of yours and I don't know if it's something like you want to rehash, but I know a lot of people like always ask you like, what does a producer do? So is that something like you want to, you'd like to specify? I'm always happy to talk about <laughs> what a producer does because I'm so tired of like, I'm so tired of the misconception of what a producer does because mm -hmm. it's like, you know, everyone deserves their flowers that are behind the scenes because like we all put in so much work that just like, whether it goes unnoticed or not, there's a lot of like, there just like isn't education around so much stuff. So now it's like people here produce, especially in the music space, for mm -hmm. example, in the music space, people here producer and they're like, oh, he made the beat. And it's like, like, no, I, like actually not. Like there's the music producers that mm -hmm. make beats and then there's the producers that are responsible for executing everything from A to Z. So it's like, if you see a visual, for example, for an artist, the producer's duty is to take everything from like the treatment okay. to life and like working with the directors hand in hand to make sure that we're both on the same page creatively, that we're both meeting the standard that, you know, we want to achieve to making sure, you know, to hiring everybody to like literally overseeing everything A to Z. Producers like we're on board from this like very beginning to the end. And, you know, depending on the case, like usually like you work closely with the director and, and same with them. Wow. Um, but yeah, producers are responsible for everything. The liability is on us. Like we Sheesh. sign the contracts. If something goes wrong, we're you know we're held liable for it. Uh, Damn. And we make this shit happen. And when budgets are tight, who has to make that shit happen? The producers. We have to fucking pull the favors. And when budgets are big too, who has to make it happen? Like you know, we have to execute everything A to Z. So uh, and that applies to film everything as well. It's like all A to Z. Whether if you're doing film, you may be like doing that like creatively as well as raising money yeah um and there's different forms of producers uh but yeah producer all in all is like the fucking driving force behind everything and keeping everyone happy at the same time too okay you know oh wow yeah i feel like i was definitely um one of the people who was under the misconception that 
when you have that title of producer, it's um, like, just like in the fiscal sense, you know, like you're funding a lot of mm -hmm. things. And like, I guess I thought there was like some kind of coordination too involved, but I didn't really have like a good idea of it. What it is. No, for sure. And especially in film, people have that, people have that misconception <laughs> because there is certain, like, like usually in film, an executive producer is the person that's bringing the money. There's, there's certain, there's different things that people can do to get an EP credit, but generally speaking, an EP credit entails bringing the money to a project. Okay. And like in film, producer is the highest position, position of power. So if you make a film and it wins the Oscar for best picture, mm -hmm. producers get, like the producers, not the EPs, the producers get the Oscar. Uh, in music videos, it's kind of the flip where EPs are the highest position okay. um, because you, usually that, and that basically means like say a music video commissions me to do it with my company. I'm the executive producer of that music video and depending on budget, I'll either produce it myself mm -hmm. or I'll like hire outsource a producer to like do it on the ground, oh, wow. but I'll okay. still be overseeing and executing everything and making sure like I sign off on everything. Mm -hmm. um, and that has nothing to do with, you know, money at all. So it's like kind of like per like field, there's different, uh, yeah, there's, there's different like variables to it. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Thank you for that. Mm. Yeah. That was like, <laughs> holy shit. Yeah. That was great. That was like a perfect definition. The different like variables that could lead to like the different def definitions. Like, wow. There's uh, a lot to it. There's a lot, yeah. a lot more to it than people think. That's why I'm always happy to explain it and educate people on it because especially if you're in the industry, yeah. whether you're an artist, whether you're, well, no matter what you are, you should know what position means what, especially mm -hmm. the driving forces of yeah. these visuals, these creatives, like yeah. without producers, these things don't exist. And if you don't have a producer, you know, it's probably just like a, you know, you know, fuck it type of vibe <laughs> and like whatever. And that's fine too. But mm -hmm. like once you get to a certain level, like you'll have the producers that drive everything forward. Okay. Wow. Yeah. No, thank you for that. So you, you mentioned like your production company. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It's called New York. You Sir. Got it on the <laughs> shirt. <laughs> um, how did, how did that become about? Like, what was, uh, what was the inception behind New York? So I've been producing for over 10, I'm 27 now. I've been producing since I was super young. Mm -hmm. Uh, and over the years I've had different companies with different people, uh, and then I produced independently just off of my name for a long time. Oh, wow. And throughout that entire process, you know, a lot of things didn't work out, like like creative differences with people. But I was building an empire through my name. Uh, but I always like wished I always wanted to have just like one company where everything lived under. Yeah, and was like that. That was the empire I had built. So I feel like early, like late last year, I was having a realization. I was like, I need to start a new company that represents everything that. I do already and mm -hmm. want to continue to do versus it just being my name. Okay. Uh, and I had this idea for New York. Uh, and New York is obviously a play on like New York and, you know, the famous year. Year. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I just felt like it represented me to a T and mm -hmm. the style of work that I create and the people I work with on all levels. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I decided to run with it. And it's just like for so many years, I've been packaging and stuff, making stuff happen, connecting this artist with this person this actress with this agent, like all of the above. And I'm like, I was doing a lot of this thing just because, just cause I like, I have a genuine heart and like, I'd like to see people I believe in win. Yeah. But I was like, I need to have some sort of like, it's like, if I'm going to take my time to do things, I need to like have some sort of like manager aspect to it as well. Yeah. So I was like, I'll start a company and once I produce everything I do, uh, everything that comes my way and also like work with certain like on a manager standpoint work with directors I want to work with work with creatives creators I want to work with and, and get gain from it as well and be yeah. growing them together and actually have real motive and passion to do so okay so that was kind of like the factor of like bringing this all together and putting it under one empire and then growing that up so okay. it's like New York while it's a newly formed company this year mm -hmm. it's still a representation of everything I've built the past 10 plus years. Okay. You know? So what are some, uh, what are some projects you've done so far under the New York, uh, moniker label 
name <laughs> yeah, for sure <laughs> I, don't, I don't know i don't yeah. know what like the right word I mean, is obviously you know you just talked about the favio project that's one under the new york banner uh i did this project with the band blonde redhead okay uh starring Peyton list which is soon to come out it's like a music film kind of uh just did a project with big body bez that's soon to drop got a video with the v's and his album drops uh in a few days uh, ganger and we're one of the first visuals off the album and like that i'm very excited about oh, shit. Okay. uh there's a bunch of random projects that i've been doing a lot of stuff i'm building and i have a bunch of film stuff beyond closed doors that we're developing in this space and then outside of that too it's just like directors that i'm piecing together with projects and even creators like i represent some social like influencers like this one kid connor mather who started the npc trend like, oh he's shit. a real life npc and we just <laughs> did some he was just out in the city and we just had some deals with some brands uh oh he's the kid because i saw that on your story he's the kid who does um does the videos but it's like got like almost like a gta exactly like, okay. yeah he literally he started that whole trend <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah just like i'm doing a lot of work beyond closed doors of like growing creators directors and mm -hmm. even you know animators and stuff wow yeah holy shit it's like yeah no it's like the, the company is ex expansive and as multifaceted as you are mm -hmm. that's awesome holy shit what i'm uh yeah bringing people together with throwing events like doing stuff in the art world like there's a lot of stuff that's going on behind closed doors that we're like pushing forward yeah that you guys are really excited for yeah. right nice you wanna what kind of close like what kind of stuff just <laughs> no, just meaning like you know like really because with my company my biggest thing is community yeah so like i'm always trying to bring people together you know whether they're at the start of their career or like very well on their career even with the event that you came to the other day with just like uh, yeah i'm just like there's a lot of stuff that i'm like pushing forward me like beyond closed doors of like trying to connect the community and bring yeah. people together and help people like learn the ends of the industry and people that come from like areas that aren't privileged and don't have the guidance or resources mm -hmm. to know where to begin because yeah. i didn't have any of that and i know a lot of the people around me don't have that and i'm always trying to be a resource for that yeah you know no so absolutely like stuff like that, that i'm like I think that's so cool because, um, yeah, I feel like I definitely, uh, before I got into the industry, even then, I feel like I'm still like very much on the cusp, like on the outside, like looking in still. I, uh, I'm one of those people. I didn't really have very many resources. All I knew was that I could write and I've been writing everything but like music, music journalism, like anything that was like outside of the music field for the most part, like I wrote about. And now, I feel like I'm seeing a lot more of that too, you know, people who are very willing to like help people out, put people onto a lot of things, you know, like not gatekeep. I feel like that's a really important thing. It is. And I look, I want to see more of it because I mean, I constantly, <laughs> I constantly see nothing but gatekeeping. Mm -hmm. And even with major artists that like come from the city, it's just like, if you've made it and you're in the position to help people and educate people, like I, I feel like it's always a constant. I talk about this a lot. It's like, Everybody is like so like high, like so quick to capitalize off the hype of artists, but the yeah. minute they get locked up for some like real shit, like that all fizzles out. And it's like like you, these, like people are in positions to like prevent that and help educate and help guide uh, the youth to better and safer futures. Uh, but it's, it's not always about the numbers and the financial gain of it. So I'd love to see more of that. And there's definitely a lot of people out there doing it, but like, mm -hmm. that's something I try to push because you know, it affects me firsthand. Uh, and I'm just, yeah, I'm just like tired of, I'm tired of seeing like the clout chasing fucking element of everything. And it's just like, do good, help like educate people. If you're in a position of power, like give back. Even it could be a simple thing. It could be fucking talking to someone. Like start a program that you don't even run. You have five million people that fucking work for you. Like send someone out to like and stamp your name to it and like help like provide resources. Like, yeah. You know? Like especially in New York, like we have so many areas and boroughs throughout New York that are fucking struggling and there's no guidance and there's so much talent out there. Kids just need guidance. Like you saw K Flock made a huge post about it mm -hmm. the other day. Like you know he's he's fighting for his life. Yeah. Uh, and he's talking about guidance. What he's doing is great for speaking up mm -hmm. to that because most people, you know, especially involved in the stuff he's involved in, like don't have the courage 
to speak up about that because they think it may like affect their image but he's being real about it you know yeah. so i just would love to see more of that yeah wow that was there's a lot to unpack there because um it's actually like one of my questions or at least like it's adjacent to one of my questions um because like you said like a lot of these young kids that are rapping especially like in the drill rap scene like they they live in these conditions that aren't good they're forced to do things that aren't really good either you know and it's so fucked up that we, like, as a collective, you know, like, we, we live in a culture where those kinds of things, like, those negative images are pushed onto people and then, like, labels come and capitalize off of yes. that stuff like crazy. Mm -hmm. So, um, I know, like, I, I saw, like, another interview you did yeah, well, where you were like, that, yeah. it's a really passionate topic, or rather, it's a topic you're really passionate about. And I was just wondering, like, is that, like, still... Do you, do you still have like those same feelings on the state of hip hop or like this kind of stuff like just has not changed? For sure. No, I, I mean, I definitely do because at the end of the day, it's like, if <laughs> it's like if you could get behind something that you're not even educated or aware of what's being like said and like the real like, like the real life actions that are behind things yeah. and you're just solely involved in it for the financial gain of it, that's a problem. I'm not saying that's everyone because there is plenty of like leaders in the industry that are mm -hmm. working with these artists that actually are from the streets and understand the streets and like give them a platform and like talk to them and not like, yeah. you know, and like try to be like an older brother figure to being like, you know, I've been here. I've done time for this stuff. Like there is people like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, on a grand scope, no, most people, I have the people that work with some of these artists do not I've never been like in the hood a day in their life wow. so it's like it's like you know that's saying a lot to be working with someone and like not actually be in a position to so there's levels to there's levels to it yeah i just try to open the conversation up of like people educating themselves more and trying to be like more more of like a guidance for young people because yeah. a lot of kids do get involved in stuff so young and just don't have like they don't have a shoulder to fuck. They don't have somebody to come to and talk to and be like, look, like I'm stuck in this fucking situation. I do not know what to do. And this is the only thing I know. Like, how do I get it? People don't have that. And, yeah. and it's sad that people only maybe get that if they fucking like are successful. Because there's so many kids out there that are more like there's kids out there that are more talented than fucking the most mainstream artists now that don't even have the guidance, resources or anything to get. No, I know so many of those people that are just like, I'm like, how aren't you fucking a star by now? They don't know anything. They're like, they're just stuck there and they don't, and, and most people that are in a position, they don't really care to hear you out as much unless you have like the numbers. And like, I get that, like there's business mm -hmm. aspect to it, but like yeah. a lot of people are in positions to like, kind of like bridge a gap. Like, you know, there's gotta be a little bit of both. Uh, so I just, I just try to push that conversation because I want to see more of it. Like, I'm not like I'm not judging people. I'm not coming at people. Like I'll happily have a conversation with anyone. I'll happily let myself to get involved with any of that. Like I'm actually just passionate about it. And I want to see that change. Like you know, because mm -hmm. uh, I see the people struggling there, and yeah. there's so much talent out there. Like every like, uh, yeah, it'd be beautiful to see those people fucking win and get away from like the shit that they're caught in. Yeah, bro, it's just fucking, it's upsetting. <laughs> no, absolutely. But there's room to grow. There's no denying that. There's room to grow. <laughs> we just need people to come forward and talk about it and be open to doing it. Yeah. There's plenty of people out there like, so like, this is, this is what I'm saying. Let's come forward. Hit me up. Let's fucking be a part of the movement. Like, you know? Yeah. No, because like, it's, I feel like being here in New York where the drill scene um, is, was like super prevalent for a very long time mm -hmm. and still like to a degree has like a foothold for sure. here. Um yeah, it's like, it's so much more than just drill too, you know? You have so many mainstream artists, like Fetty Wap, for example. For sure. You know, like Thug, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah. Like so many people, YNW Melly, for yeah. example. Like there's so much stuff going on and it's, while it's not necessarily the same exact situation every time, there's always those, um, those comparable elements, you know? That you could be like, well, <sighs> Labels not helping out, labels capitalizing off of a terrible situation. And then like when these things do happen and they do get put in these bad situations, it's almost like they're like, all right, bye. We'll, yeah, we'll pay for your for legal sure. defense if that. But For sure. And I've heard plenty of stories like that. I haven't been personally involved in that, but I've heard plenty of stories like that. And that's fucked up because that, that just only shows what your initial motives were. But like if you, 
that yeah, that's why I wanted there should there should be there should be departments that are dedicated to like you know the human resources of it all. Like you know there there definitely should in the guidance and and programs or whatever there is. But you know a lot of these people like do well and then they get caught. You see bigger like you're saying like thug like look at Casanova for example. Like Casanova, yeah. you know he's been battling the system a long time. He came out. He was on the top. Like he was doing good. He was doing so well for himself. And the minute like he got to the top, like they stripped him of everything. Like now he's fighting for his fucking life. Yeah, man. you know. And, like, he was actually being a voice to these younger people. Like, he was trying to help educate. But, like, you know, he was caught up in stuff that he was caught up in. Like, you know, but, and then, like, people quickly forget. And then, like, they're like, oh, he goes, like, oh, I don't care. Like, you know, and that's fucked, like, that's fucked up. It's just, like, we should, like, keep the same energy we have from the start with people that we believe in. And it shouldn't just be, like, only about gain. Like, you know, there should be more to it. And there is more to it. So it's, like. I don't know when we came to that point as a society, but like mm -hmm. that shit needs to fucking go because that's not it. Like, there's no growth in that, and we're gonna all be scratching our heads until that fucking changes. Of like, oh, why is this happening? Why did this happen to him? Why did this happen to her? Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like he's telling you straight up, he's fucking <laughs> he's spitting his fucking heart out in a fucking song, and you think it's a joke, and then fucking <laughs> yeah, it's not not that much of a joke. Yeah. Like, it's crazy because. It almost feels like an unsustainable business model for these labels to be uh, signing these kids. And it's not like they're not like unaware of the situation for anyway, sure. you know, like they're, they, they know. And then when these kids get in trouble, they're kind of just like, they peace out. But then on top of that, like that being a business model, signing someone, them popping off and then like no longer being able to make music just to go on to the next person and basically repeat that process almost. It's just like, it, it, like what buck are you making? Exactly. Exactly. There's so much more in the longevity of it. Like, there's so much more, not only like money, you, mm -hmm. if that's like the focus of money, there's so much mo more money in the longevity of it. But there's also so much growth in society by like actually, like, you know, and these people are in positions to do that. Oh my God. I, that's why it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, I'm not going to sit here and like scrutinize or fucking judge but i'm just i'm actually curious like i'd mm -hmm. be so happy for someone to come to me and fucking give me the answer because i'm curious yeah. this shit does not add up for me it doesn't make sense like i'm curious <laughs> genuinely curious like straight yeah. up shit if somebody like if we can get a label exec over here give us like you know the abc's one two threes of it all Let's do it. For but sure. I want to. I want to see. Well, I want to see the action. I mean, I hear so. I've heard so much shit over here. I want to see the action. Like, yeah. Instead, money instead of like, is. instead of some social media post saying you stand with somebody. Like, exactly. Stand with them. Like, with I them. support them. Yeah. Are you in there? Are you there for uh, court? Are you like, uh, stand with them? Yeah. And if you are, fucking, I amend you. Like, need more people like you. <laughs> you <know>? Like straight <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, man. Absolutely. Um, what's it called? Let's. Uh, so. I touched on the long form stuff before. Right. Well, actually, no, not really. I didn't, but I wanted to move to it. Um, so you being a film producer, mm -hmm. you were recently at Cannes. Yes. What was that like? That was that was awesome. That's like Can if and if you know like if you're in film like Can is the cream of the crop. Like it doesn't get bigger than Can. Like yeah. Like that's one of the most prestigious places to be, especially with a feature film. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember, like. Two weeks before, like my fucking, had just, like I was living in LA for a few years. I just moved back. I was living above a restaurant. The restaurant burnt down the whole building. Like I lost everything I fucking owned. Oh my god! Yeah, like super crazy. And at the time, I was hanging out with a friend, and they were like, "Oh, like what's your dream festival?" And I was like, "Obviously, Cannes." I'm like, I played like pretty much every other festival, but like Cannes is the cream of the crop. Like that's who doesn't want to premiere at Cannes? Yeah. For uh, real. And I was involved to agree on this film. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it was just like a long waiting process because COVID happened uh, and they were waiting to like do an in-person festival. And the dream, they always had the dream of going to Cannes, but, you know, as is everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and then I remember getting the news and it was just the best feeling. And I was like, I had lost everything. And I'm like, I'm really not in a position trying to go to Cannes right now, but I had to because I'm like, this is like a one, this is like an opportunity, especially at my age to be a part of a film in any capacity that's premiering at Cannes in competition is huge. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that was a great fucking feeling. That was awesome. That was very exciting. And just to walk the red carpet and all of the kids from the reservation in South Dakota, mm -hmm. like, 
you know, they managed to put together the money to get them flown out wow. to Can. That's amazing. Which is incredible. These kids had never left South Dakota. Mm-hmm. So the fact that they got to wow. leave the country and be at Can for the movie that's about their real lives was fucking beautiful. So it was just a very rewarding feeling to see that happen. It was beautiful. Yeah, I could imagine. And that like that directly ties into what you were just talking about exactly. too. Mm-hmm. Like like put, giving these people the opportunity to come see these things that they wouldn't have been able to otherwise. For sure. There was so many great people on that film like me, my friend Eleanor and a few other like a few other people like they were very like hands-on and like support like they they live with these kids like they spent months they still to this day do it but like well wow. her myself and a bunch of other people raise money for them on the reservation they could have like a christmas to yeah. build up their shacks to do all this stuff uh and like to this day they're still involved like i you know i had a big part in helping them then but like they never left these kids sides to this day like they're still wow. like you call them they'll answer in two seconds like they're yeah, they spend a lot of their time out of the year, but like no financial gain just because like they're passionate about it. So it's wow. very beautiful to see like a story like that come to screen and have people behind it that are so passionate about these kids mm-hmm. uh, and actually care and like for that to carry on yeah. outside of just like what is beneficial uh, and to actually shine light on these kids' lives because now mm-hmm. they're getting attention and stuff is happening and, you know, long way to go, but. Sorry. <laughs> the, the page is turning for them, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, overall, fucking beautiful experience. What I'm... Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Where did you want to... No, no. Oh, okay. Uh, so, for the people who don't know, uh, Jamie's talking about the film War Pony. Do you want to um, just give, like, a little synopsis on what it's about for the viewers? Yeah. So, basically, War Pony takes place on this reservation in South Dakota uh, of these young Native American kids that literally have like nothing like they barely they don't barely even have shelter and it's just like this beautiful coming of age story of these kids and their families and the struggles and like hardships they go through like prospering in life but there's like so much like turbulence throughout it it's just like a very beautiful story and it's all like based off of like what really happens there like riley keogh who's a very successful actress uh and the grand great granddaughter of elvis or granddaughter, one of the two, uh, you know, obviously in a great position to be able to like help these kids. Uh, she wrote the story oh, with wow. people from the reservation to make sure that it lived to the actuality of the of their lives. And everyone in the film is from the reservation. They only cast real people from the reservation. So really just like put the people in a position to tell their story. Mm-hmm. And, Wow. Beautiful. Yeah, no, that's amazing. I feel like uh, it's great, too. It feels so poignant because I feel like there's been a lot of, uh, or at least, like, a larger number of movies with, like, an indigenous person's, like, it's just, like, their story, you know? Even if it's not a movie, it's just, like, TV shows, like Reservation Dogs, for example. For sure. Like, I feel like it's so necessary, too, as, as film feels like now more than ever like it's so much more accessible you know like you can see so many more stories on screen that you might not have seen 20 30 years ago for sure yeah it's beautiful to see how far we've come in society of like telling all sorts of stories from all different backgrounds and cultures like you know and especially to those that really need that like this film the whole their whole idea like this is like their saving grace like it gives them a fighting chance you know mm-hmm. it might not be the exact answer like the full answer in that you know it's not like everything is going to change in a matter of a second but like that gives them a chance to like be heard to be seen to reach the masses like the film just opened up internationally uh it opened up in a bunch of theaters in the uk oh, well. and you know it'll soon have a u.s premiere but like you know, I'm sure they never thought that they'd be seeing themselves and their fucking stories told in a di- you know in multiple different countries. So that's beautiful and that's progress. Yeah. So. Wow, that's amazing, and it feels like that's like that's why you do it too. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. To have that kind of impact. For sure. Wow, that's amazing. Um, what's it called? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had to burp. False alarm. <laughs> yeah. No. Absolutely false alarm. <laughs> um, hold on. oh excuse me um i wanted to ask one question what is like what is a lesson that i feel like 
I was initially going to ask it earlier, kind of about like your just your whole experience in the industry. But now that we're on the subject of Warpony and like the the result of everything and what it's become, what is one lesson I feel like you've learned from this project, or even like in the industry in general, that you're definitely going to bring with you moving forward into all your other projects? Damn, like where the fuck to begin? I've learned so many lessons in this industry. Every every instance is a fucking <laughs> lesson. Uh, man, I gotta think on this for a second, Michael. Who? That's tough. It's just like my my. I think my grand overall lesson to this day, I stand by it. Yeah. You know, and to, you know, everyone's different, and you know, it may have brought me more struggles than not, but like my overall lesson is always saying staying true to myself and my creative integrity mm -hmm. and just like my life integrity uh that's one thing i've never i've never like dropped or compromised for anyone i've always been true to myself and you know anyone that knows me knows that but i think the biggest like lesson within that is like i've been in instances where people and you know i've been screwed over you know by people that i thought like were good people uh, and that I always had right intentions towards and shit happened. And my lesson throughout that is like, even through all of those struggles and trouble and hardships it may have brought me, yeah. is like the most rewarding thing was staying true to myself because at the end of the day, like I don't, I don't sit around feeling bad about myself or, or feeling like, oh, I, sh I f like, no, cause I'm always true to myself. So it's like, even if something isn't exactly how I want it, like, I feel content within. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big lesson is like staying true to what you believe and even if it takes a little bit more time and to yourself because if not, you will be miserable. And I know so many people that are miserable because they compromised and stuff that like didn't sit with them. Well, you know, like they, you know, turn their fucking like gut in that moment, but they, you know, they had to do it. Uh, and that's one thing I never did. So, uh, but like I've learned lessons from that by staying to that, just dealing with shitty people, you know? Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, I feel like in great, yeah, I feel like as a whole, like that's a big thing for me. Wow. Um, thank you so much. That was great. That was an amazing answer. Um, I want to ask one last thing. And I feel like you could kind of piggyback off of it a little bit because like it's somewhat adjacent to it, but to anybody who is an aspiring creator out there, be it an actor uh, director, videographer, anyone who is looking to get into just, I guess, the media industry or entertainment industry in general, what is one piece of advice you would give to them? Yeah. It's always a great question because everyone's like, <laughs> go create. <laughs> Make something. <laughs> you know? No, but like truly is creating your own, it's like creating your own lane because now, I mean, my answer five years ago would have been different than my answer is today because mm -hmm. now we have access to just about everything from like TikTok to YouTube to Instagram to like you have a million to you know Twitch to fucking Rumble you like we have access to so many different platforms to create mm -hmm. uh and I feel like TikTok is the prime example of what's possible by like just being yourself and creating your own content yeah and not everything clicks right away shit takes time and sometimes it does click right away but that doesn't mean that what you're doing and what they're like, that's what someone's doing is better than yours because it clicked quicker. Yeah. Uh, I think it, it's really like following my last answer is like staying true to yourself and creating content within that space. Mm -hmm. Like, whether you're a photographer, whether you're a video, like at the last event I did, I had photographers coming up to me, like talking, like, you know, that are doing well, talking to me, like, you know, I'm shooting photos for a lot of big people. Like, what do I do? I don't know what to do next. And mm -hmm. like, it's just like, yeah, I really believe in like, it's like staying true. To yourself and creating within your lane and utilizing what's in front of you like and that may sound like fucking bullshit because you're like oh like how do i make money how do i so I'm like i get that i hear that like yeah. i'm no one different than like i you know i have the same struggles and battles as everyone and hustling things and making money and making a living when you don't have people that are like paying for your life you know but it's like if you want to be a creator it's like yeah being open to creating on all platforms being open to learning from people not mm. being not, not being caught within your head where you think that like you're better than anyone and like learning from the people that have done stuff that you appreciate stuff that you like like taking advice like yeah. finding mentors finding good people finding other people that are like 
creative as well that align with what you're creating. It's really like building community because mm. if you could build community, you could build upon that and then you could transition that to money. You could transition that to success. You could like whatever it be. So it's really just like running within your lane and building that community around you. Mm -hmm. uh, and be, and like you have to be in it for the long term. Like if you're in it just because or you want instant gratification, like you're in the wrong industry. And even if you get instant gratification, you're going to be fucking miserable after the fact because like it's not going to like it's not truly what like sits within you morally of what you want yeah. to do. You're just doing it because of like other like, re you know. Yeah. So I think it's really, yeah, you really just need to like have you need to have longevity within your plan, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I think if you build that community around you and like stay creative, like you, you can fucking grow. People do it. I yeah, mean, man. even like with respective that you work with, like, you know, they build the community within themselves. Like they build a bunch of loyal people that are passionate about stuff and grow. Like, yeah, that didn't happen overnight. Like that stuff takes time to grow. And people, I feel like people see like, oh my God, like, how did you get here? Like it's, it was he, like, no, like people are fucking spending years and years of like unspoken about moments and fucking struggles to get there. But yeah. sometimes it just look even with artists like you see artists like people like how the fuck did he pop off like he's not even good but like or whatever or whatever they'll say about she like you know but some of these artists may have been fucking like beyond closed doors working for five years with zero views fucking like you know and and that stuff is just like discouraging when i first had my podcast i had fucking hella famous people in the early episodes and we'd be getting 70 downloads of fucking episode like that's discouraging yeah. i'm like how do i have and then that transition to millions of fucking downloads mm -hmm. and that doesn't mean everything i do does but like you know like there's always going to be those discouraging moments and it's about like fighting through them and like if you believe in your you got to believe in yourself and build a community around you that you believe in and vice versa you know yeah absolutely wow thank you so much that was like <laughs> you were just like one after the other with these like <laughs> these fucking like gold nuggets the wise like, man I, I hope well i don't know whichever camera is on me or if it's even on me but like yo i hope you guys are paying attention because this is <laughs> especially from somebody who has so much experience in the industry and not even just like the industry as a whole it's like so many different facets and so many different levels of the industry mm -hmm. it's like damn thank you so much man oh, of course yeah oh, of course and um shout out respective definitely <laughs> a little plug but uh shout out respective i mean like i agree i feel like that community aspect is so important to being a creative because like i i don't know i take it from like a writer's perspective like i can't really do much if there's nothing for me to write about you for know sure. and knowing people who are a and r's or managers videographers photographers or even artists themselves like that opens up that lane to yeah definitely like it allows me to get more work or more things to do but building those relationships with those people in turn will help them out too you know like for sure everybody gets put on for sure and that's why it's like it really comes down to people being open-minded because like even at this point i still battle like having to like like educate people on stuff and other artists and talent or whatever that like they do not like give a chance like don't even give a fucking second glance like you know and that's a constant battle like, people just need to be more open-minded i feel like we got it we got to a time where it's like there's so much like ego and involved in everything where it's like people are just like oh if, if i did not find that it's not a thing for me and it's like that's such bullshit like if people need to open their fucking minds more like and i think like to everything i've said in this interview like a lot would change if people do that and there's so many people that do it, but there's so many, there's more people that don't like, you know, and especially people of power and in, like in certain industries, like there just needs to be way more of that. Like there's way more of that. There would be so much growth. Yeah. There would be so much growth. I feel like collaboration is, is like one of the like key pillars, you know, like one of the spirit, it's just like in the heart and soul of community, you know, sure. I, I mean, let me rephrase that creativity. No, but no, um, for sure. But like also community. No, yeah, it's both. That's hand in hand, you know? That all ties together. Uh, and once people realize that, like, they'll go so much further. Like, I, you know, I didn't, like, it took me a while to realize that too. Like, community, I've always been a community person, mm -hmm. but like, you know, collaboration, like, not, like, not thinking that you, or you, no matter what you've achieved, not thinking that just because you've done something that you're above people or you can't learn from someone. Just because I've achieved this doesn't mean that I can't learn from someone that's done nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like everyone has different wisdom 
to offer different experiences to offer that can people can grow from so i just i just see so much of that and i would i would love to see a change in that of people being more open minded and more open and like more open eared to others yeah because i swear there's so much to fucking learn like i love learning i love being i love being taught something i don't know i love being fucking schooled like you know mm -hmm. and i love fucking educating people as well like, yeah wow thank you so much jamie like this has been a great conversation honestly it hasn't even felt like an interview it just felt like us talking <laughs> and with the, the mic just happened to be in front of us exactly. with all oh, these cameras well, on i didn't even see that <laughs> <laughs> but man again thank you so much for coming out here i really appreciate it um is there anything like upcoming that i know you spoke about it a little bit that the people need to look out for um but do you just want to put them on again one more time yeah i mean so i i have a bunch of projects up up and coming uh most like pressing and quickest to be coming out is hopefully this v's uh video i did I did a video off the new ganger album mm -hmm. he's dropping in a few days we have a visual off that coming out we have a visual off of big body bez's new album uh i have this mini fashion film i made that's so fucking sick okay. that we're looking to premiere within the next month or so uh and yeah there's, there's plenty more there's plenty more coming but uh like in the immediate those are like a few things and then you know obviously follow the socials and uh, we <laughs> stay more in tune and then i have a few social media shows i run okay both like music and street shows a lot of content coming out this summer on that stuff oh sure uh yeah okay can you uh, tell the people where to find you yeah so jamie m dolan on instagram and new york on instagram and that pretty much applies to every possible <laughs> fucking channel uh <laughs> literally um yeah so jamie m dolan or new york that's where you go all right awesome jamie again thank you so much it's been a great conversation you've been a great interview and honestly i just i hope to have you back again for more of course hell yeah let's get into it next time let's <laughs> go we'll come back with more juice thank you man oh, thank you uh,